right, folks, we're just going to hop right into it today and see how things go. We're uh, continuing with the stone golem sketch uh, from uh, before the weekend. Now, I had I'd kind of thought, uh, so we're doing monsters and mercenaries all March. That's the idea. Uh, from the uh, Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual, and I might end up pulling from the supplemental guides as well. Volo's Guide, uh, Mordekainen's Tome of Foes, some of that kind of stuff, uh, to get a little more monster variety, and maybe even, um, you know, on some of the days, not even rolling up random monsters, but just uh, uh, picking something out. I found that I've... I've uh, vetoed a few of the roles just because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't feel like drawing a particular monster or you know what I've what I've noticed and I could have gone a different direction with the stone golem because stone golems uh, are described as you know being able to take the shape of animals being able to take the shape of you know mythical beasts and things like that uh, you can imagine like a, a lion you know a stone statue of a lion as a stone golem um, those kind of things. I could have gone that direction. I chose not to. Uh, these are depicted in the Monster Manual as kind of humanoid. Um, they're all, you know, bipedal. Uh, <laughs> they look like, uh, you know, they got ar they got arms and legs like uh, like humans as they're depicted. So we kind of went with uh, design like that. Although we kind of eschewed the chunkier Mega Man looking stone golem that's depicted in the Monster Manual for more of a kind of like statuesque, um, sort of like goddess effigy kind of thing. Uh, and that's that's what we're going with. Uh, but anyway, uh, I decided, you know, I'm not going to push myself to do a random new uh, monster every time. I have other projects I'm working on. Uh, it didn't really seem worth it uh, just to say that I, that I did it. Uh, and so... Um, some of these days we're just going to be continuing the previous uh, where we left offs sketch. Uh, now for the first two um, days, you know, quote unquote days, uh, I we had the frost giant, which I then kind of worked up to a semi-finished level, um, and the mummy lord, which is still a work in progress. I, I really enjoyed doing both, and I will probably continue uh, with each of those once I have a little more time to do so. And I think what could be fun is taking just the favorites at the end of the month and to then, you know, continuing to ideate upon them, maybe uh, doing a couple additional sketches that kind of show either some personality or some potential other, you know, just uh, poses or, you know, close-ups on certain features, that kind of thing, uh, which can then ultimately go into the kind of supplemental NPC monster, mini monster manual that I'm working on. Uh, as part of this project. So that's the plan anyway. And you can see here, I've kind of got uh, two different versions uh, so far, and I'll do a third where we're just kind of working off the base sketch and um, doing some different features. I like the idea for a kind of Naginata type, kind of like huge uh, spear-like weapon, but one that still, um, can uh, crush things just because of the sheer weight of it. Uh, I kind of like that idea, although I'm not sure exactly, you know, what uh, what I want the design to be like. And now I'm just kind of tooling around. But anyway, we'll uh, maybe you know get some of these features just sort of locked in. Choose a weapon, and then uh, do a couple of different versions of that weapon. Uh, to accommodate the sketch. And as I'm talking, I'm just kind of bouncing between these two as I think of little details, but uh, really uh, just kind of going with the flow on these. Uh, I think that's my, generally my favorite way to work. Uh, it's not necessarily the most efficient way. Um, 
I probably could have done a little more research on these. I did have some kind of stone statues, ancient stone statues pulled up. Before, and I don't have those in front of me right now, and I probably should. But you know, sometimes you just gotta go with go with the flow. And that's what we're doing today. You know, my uh, grandpa and grandma used to have, um, so my grandpa uh, was in the Peace Corps many, many, many years ago. Um, and he was in India uh, doing like, I think they were, they were assisting in like building farms and agricultural um, what do you call it? Infrastructure, that kind of thing. Uh, and so my grandpa was always really into um, that kind of aesthetic, I think. And he had uh, various things that he picked up on his trip. And uh, my grandma is uh, Vietnamese. So there was a lot of that kind of like Southeast Asian influence in the decorations in their home. And they had some really cool... Um, kind of like statuesque like metal figures that kind of had this uh, sort of almost uh, Buddha-like um, uh, sort of design element to them. And I don't know uh, if they were supposed to be <laughs> uh, Buddhist or, or if they were associated with uh, perhaps Hinduism. I, I'm not really sure. I'd have to go back and actually pretty sure my grandma still has a lot of that stuff so I'd have to go back and actually look at it. But um, I've appreciated how cool that kind of stuff was because my grandma also had like, you know, a lot of the uh, what we'll say, like typical American grandma stuff. <laughs> like uh, for example uh, like little um porcelain figurines uh, with like dogs and stuff and, and I, I was really into that stuff in the, as a kid because my uh, parents wouldn't let me get a dog until well they didn't even let, ever let me get a dog uh, they got a dog for my sister which of course became my mom's dog but that wasn't until I was like almost finished with high school um, but anyway my grandma had all these little porcelain figurines of, of various uh breeds of dogs uh, which I always uh, you know I never kind of thought about it my grandma apparent apparently my my grandma and grandpa had a dog a similar situation to me they got it when their kids were older I think they ended up like adopting it or something from a friend I'm not sure I never met the dog it was long gone before before I was born <laughs> I never thought of my grandma as a dog person, so I never, I never thought how like, I was like, ah, this is this is kind of weird that she has all these like little figurines of dogs. I wonder why that is. Maybe some, some circular elements there. stone discs which you know would be elements of the armor but uh, so this is kind of interesting because this is taking on sort of both an Indian and kind of like Chinese terracotta warrior aesthetic Kind of both at once and definitely a little bit angrier than uh, this one this one has more of an alien kind of look to it and this one i think is evoking a little bit more of what i'm trying to go for with uh with this drawing although i don't know if it's quite there yet i think what i'll do is once we're through with this sketch um pump up the size of the head uh to give it that kind of like more statuesque sort of appearance and feel. And I think maybe the 
chest needs to be a little bit more robust. And I had thought about, you know, it's like, well, these legs are a little bit chunky. They do need to be substantial though, because you think about like if this thing stands up, right? It's got to have a pretty solid base. So I hope I don't get like a copyright strike or anything for this music, but you know, most of the uh, lo-fi beats kind of videos and channels, they don't really care too much, but this is a uh, Diablo um, lo-fi beats uh, video. It's actually on the Dia the official Diablo channel. Uh, and it's got like, instead of like the lo-fi girl, you know, doing her homework, it's uh, Deckard Kane like scrawling away with uh, with his little scrolls and such. Um, which is pretty cool, I think. Big fan of the Diablo Siri, well, for the most part. I mean, I guess I'm a big fan of Diablo 1 and 2. I had 3, and I just didn't play it all that much. I think I maybe beat the main quest line like once. And I just wasn't interested in the kind of like multiplayer content. So, didn't get too much farther than that. I think I was like a barbarian or something. I'm sure I tried out a bunch of the characters though. And, uh, you know, like a lot of other people, I, um, didn't re I couldn't really, as a fan of the previous two games, get into the aesthetic of Diablo 3, which I, I think, you know, they, they took those notes and they seem to be going in a much, uh, kind of darker, more serious direction for, for the art style in Diablo 4, which I'm excited about. Um, granted, I don't know if I'm going to end up getting it anytime soon. Uh, I'm sure it will be awesome, but um, man, did I dump just an absolute boatload of hours into the Diablo games as a kid, like in middle school. Just crazy, crazy amounts of, of time in the Diablo games. Not as crazy as uh, probably some other fans, but crazy for... You know, um, I'm basically making as much time as possible to play on the family computer because <laughs> I didn't have a PC of my own. I actually, I had an old Mac that I could play Diablo 1 on, but there was like no way in hell I could run Diablo 2. I think I may have tried installing Diablo 2 and uh, I couldn't get past like the loading screen, like the first menu screen and it, it just like wouldn't function. Uh, not nearly enough computing power. Um, but I could play StarCraft 1 on that, uh, on that old Mac, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could. I'm pretty sure I had at least enough juice for that, which I guess isn't that surprising. StarCraft 1, definitely older than Diablo 2, but um, I believe it came out after Diablo 1. Probably could have played Warcraft on there too, like Warcraft 1 and 2. But uh, I've actually I've never played either of those games. I have no idea if I'd even enjoy them. They look uh, they look a little aged. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, I never really got into Warcraft Three either. Um, definitely more of a StarCraft kid. At any rate, I like how this one's turning out. Uh, I didn't really do much with the... to make the... greaves here different, or the um, kind of leggings. So maybe we'll do something with that. Maybe kind of some of this repeating kind of textured element. Repeating some of that in other areas of the design, I think, could be cool. 
I don't know if I, I don't know how overboard I want to go with it though. Um, and I think I need to think a little more about what the shoulder pad situation would be on this particular uh, second design here. Maybe I'll just go crazy with the uh, circles and just kind of get a feel for how that you know might look if we were to kind of make that texture appear all over the kind of main pads of, of armor. Kind of get that tedium in there, the tedium of drawing little tiny circles and then going back and refining little tiny circles all over. I kind of, ooh, I kind of like that, zooming out. Um, so yeah, getting uh, a busy a busy texture or pattern um, doesn't feel busy if it's like, it, it just becomes like its own surface, right? Um, so while it's busy to draw, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, uh, it's going to look or feel busy if it um, kind of dovetails with the rest of the, uh, the armor. And I think, you know, maybe, maybe that's what we should do with these shoulder pads as well. I kind of like that idea giving it this kind of like edge to it. So one thing I am working on right now is doing some kind of pop culture D&D characters. I may have mentioned this in a previous stream, but uh, one of them are the one set is gonna be the <laughs> Gen 1 starter Pokemon as like little D&D characters. Um, that I think I'll do up stat blocks that uh, make them function Either as, you know, PCs that you can start out with and play, just like if you were playing a campaign where you, you actually are a Pokemon, uh, which I don't know that a lot of people would have a ton of interest in, but also, you know, as like little companions that uh, help you out on your, on your various quests and such, or like familiars, Poke familiars, uh, I kind of like the idea of. Um... Anyway, I just thought it would be fun to do, but like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons um, kind of is a system that can accommodate so much, or not even a, a, the system, but the, uh, you know, like the kind of lore and aesthetic of it and everything um, just borrows from so much that so many other things kind of like feel like they fit in naturally with it. Um, Pokemon maybe not so much, uh, but certainly uh, the idea of you know little creatures that have you know basically magical elemental abilities uh, that uh, follow you around and you know help you fight stuff uh, definitely definitely fits within the uh, kind of thrust of D and D. Um, anyway, the reason I brought that up is because this the armor stuff I'm working on Squirtle right now. Uh, you can see here um, Squirtle going with kind of like a warrior, like um, you know you might have him as like a fighter helper who helps you with maneuvers and kind of zones out uh, enemies with like water blasts and stuff. Um, so little dude like that. I think you know at first I was like, well, what am I going to do about the kind of class? archetypes um, if I wanted to play with that with the Pokemon and, and really they, they set it out for you I, I think I think because of the elemental alignment and even you know the way like in the anime for example the way that these um, characters are presented it, it made the choices pretty easy so Squirtle you know evolves into War Turtle, uh, and then you get he has kind of this like warrior sort of aesthetic definitely less um, mystical or magical you know he doesn't become a dragon he's just like a turtle he's got a shell which is like armor um you know the aesthetic kind of makes sense for that uh but then and then bulbasaur of course uh you know you go druid with bulbasaur because he's a plant type and uh you know you can have little bulbs and and i like the idea of you know if i continue with this project and you do the evolutions right 
Uh, Bulbasaur, obviously the motif with his evolutions is that as he evolves, the little bulb on his back opens up into a big plant, and you, you can like repeat that in like the staff and um, you know make the uh, various um, kind of accessories that he's got on a little more complicated, like they're blooming and uh, uh, that kind of thing. So, uh, And then I haven't started Charmander yet, but Charmander, uh, fire type, turns into a dragon, um, dragonborns and sorcerers, um, you know, the, within D and D you have that kind of like lore going on with them where, you know, they have dragon's blood and that's one of the ways that you gain sorcery. So fire, sorcery, kind of like chaotic and wild magic, um, probably the direction that I'll go with ultimately for, uh, Charmander. Um, so sorcerer, druid, fighter, uh, kind of the kind of the place that I'm going, I'm thinking of going with that. Anyway, let's get back to the stone golem. Um, I do like the kind of like textured features here, and now I'm feeling like this shield doesn't quite fit with those textures that we have going on. So what I'm gonna do is give this kind of a rim to it and then I don't know I do like the idea of kind of like a kind of like standard in the middle maybe not a standard but like some kind of repeating or like inside element that um, kind of repeats the shape of this border And I don't know how crazy I want to go with the like little little textured dots, but you could go for that on the shield as well, or maybe just do it in the middle. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that yet. Kind of going back to this kind of like turtle shell idea, which I don't hate. And maybe the uh, plate in the middle has the texturing. Let's just let's just go through the process of drawing that out and seeing how it looks. I think this might end up looking better if it was clear that the that this element of the shield was kind of bowing out and had some like kind of like it was jutting out of the uh, this section a little bit it had some concaveness to it you could do by being a little more careful with these circles. Like sometimes it's difficult to tell like how good is a thing going to look until you actually do it. So I'm gonna increase the size of that middle piece a little bit more. I like the size of this shield. That definitely gives it kind of a, a more of a guardian sort of, sort of feel to it, right? If we're thinking about the stone golem as a, in this case, as a guardian kind of goddess, um, the large shield and the spear, I think evokes a more kind of defensive um, role. than the sword and the kind of the smaller circular shield. OK, 
Okay, yeah, I'm digging this. I'm digging this so far. Wonder, yeah, if we want like some kind of you know, these circles, like sort of around. Yeah, I think uh, I think we do want that something in the middle, and then probably something, maybe something to make the headdress a little more ornate. And maybe that is adding some kind of like additional kind of top element to it, making that part like a little bit more. A little bit more crazy, giving a little more height. that works per se without, you know, some kind of horizontal element as well to kind of balance it out. You know, you know, that better. Sometimes you get Jones and you just like, so I've gone through, I've gone through phases with this where I'm like, how important is it to just keep cranking out ideas? You know, when do you want, when is it okay to, to just get lost in the weeds with uh, the details of what you're working on? When might that hinder your process? And for something like this, you know, like realistically, uh, there's no reason not to get lost in the weeds whenever it feels right. Um, you know, don't stress about it. There's really, uh, it's really not going to help you um, to uh, continue to iterate past the point where you know you're enjoying it, or you know, you know, you have the energy and the drive to really start noodling away on something. Uh, you might as well. If that's what you feel like doing. I'm kind of starting to get that feeling with this one. Um, but maybe that's just because I didn't do my due diligence and come up with like another idea. <laughs> another kind of direction that I explicitly want to go with it. Um, because I'm not really sure what I want to do with number three yet but I do know that I like this one a whole lot more than I like the first one so I think stone golem number two or some variation of that is going to be the uh, ultimate winner in this uh, in this little showdown this showdown of the golems golem showdown 2023. God, crazy this 2023. This nuts. Yeah, wheel of time keeps turning against our wishes. Although I guess for the past couple of years, people wanted time to go a little faster. Right? <laughs> we won't get into that here.
Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind this at all. Let's um let's snag this. Kinda gotta pick up this whole thing. My shoulder pad could be bigger as well anyway, so just kind of pump up the size of the head a little bit just to see how that feels. You know, this sketch phase, you're not screwing up too much by making little adjustments like that, so you might as well give it a shot. And that is better, I think. I think that's better. Now I'm just playing around with like adding little kind of design elements to this. Seeing what makes sense. I like those the idea of those being like big stones, although that does give it a little more of an alien look to it. Which I don't necessarily hate. necessarily hate that. Kind of just roughing in some you know, potential designs for the pedestal. Don't need to go too crazy with that at the moment, but. Okay, so number two, taking the cake at this point. I think, uh, I think that's nice, that's real nice. All right, let's, all right, what do we want to do with this last one? So, a little too alien, a little too simple on that first one. I like what the design element's going on here, and maybe it's just, you know, another version of that or another iteration. Uh, maybe for this next one, we just kind of go in with, um, like, some big, crazy shapes and ideas. Uh, like, what if, what if we went with kind of a Dinotopia sort of vibe on this last one. Gave her some like Triceratops horns. And I think they uh, maybe it was like Tomb of Annihilation that I think leans into that uh, sort of Dinotopia like uh, aesthetic. Uh, where it's like humans living in harmony with dinosaurs and such. We'll kind of borrow some of these elements from the under sketch. And we'll go with, I don't remember the name of this dinosaur, but it's like a triceratops that has kind of the spikes on the crest rather than just like, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like a standard crest, <laughs> uh, if, if there is such a thing.
Like, what if she has, like, a cool mask or something as well? That's actually pretty neat. So it's fun to get to the part of the... So I feel like, you know, because I was actually lost on where to go next, I just kind of went crazy with this. And I don't mind that. I definitely like that better than the first one because it has, you know, a specific um, sort of, uh, you know, frame of reference in nature rather than just being kind of like vaguely sort of alien and ornate. Um, so we like that. Uh, let's see. So, so you would still kind of want to go, you know, something like with bone, I think would be the way to go with this one. Sort of like a, like fossilized, ooh, stone golem that is sort of like made of, you know, the fossilized remains of or has some like fossilized elements from the bones that have been fossilized. That's kind of a, that's kind of neat. I like that. And then you can have sort of like some idiosyncrasies in the pads of armor because they, um, they don't necessarily They're not necessarily symmetrical because it's different, you know, bones from different uh, animals or, you know, different sizes, that kind of thing. So kind of go with a sort of like bone armor that is stone, stone bones. The bone of stone. I don't hate that direction. Ooh, now I'm getting excited about two of these. That's always fun. Maybe we'll have to do some more. Maybe this will just end up being <laughs> the, uh, you know, what are we, what are we excited for? So this one I'm thinking maybe a mace. So we've kind of got like a spear, halberd type weapon. We have a sword. So maybe a mace for this last one. Ooh, and kind of like, it's also like a, a drum beating sort of thing. I don't know if I want the circular shield, but I kind of like the idea of the circular shield with the mace. And what other shape could I go with with the shield? Or maybe the shield has more of a, an oval type arrangement and it's held sort of like like this rather than you know straight down uh, you know or sort of like in an ambiguous <laughs> kind of direction like we have with the uh, um, with this shield over here and maybe that oval sort of evokes the shape of an egg like a dino egg <laughs> oh Like it's the eggshell of like a mythic beast who's, you know, eggshells are practically impermeable. And so it has sort of like these cracks kind of coming over. I bet this is like really hard to see. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I, I, you know, I've been, I've been apprehensive of doing anything too final, I think, on the... Uh, on stream and uh, that means that it's probably not the best for viewing quality because I just like to sketch in this sort of like light uh, lighter fashion and then um, of course on this slightly gray background the gray background is entirely for my benefit um, and uh, you know it has a couple other 
benefits. Like working on a pure white canvas is just like no fun in almost any context, but it's just it's just so much nicer in your eyes. <laughs> Honestly. Alright, and maybe these are just like markings, they're not actually like carved elements, although maybe they should be because it is a statue, that's what the idea we're going for, but, you know, those elements kind of echo the egg, and I think we still want some sort of, like, oval centerpiece here. I think that is still something we want to go for. And again, uh, one thing that I was trying to hammer home with this is, um, Ooh, I like the idea of some nostrils there, yeah. It's like giving, uh, you know, your characters with, you know, monsters, like something to interact with. Oh, there's like a, a little, uh, like, oh, the, the glint of a, of a green gemstone uh, that glows when, you know, the creature comes alive. It's like... Is it just a valuable gemstone? Does it have something to do with the magic that's animating this golem? Um, you know, your players will speculate and uh, try and pull off some cool moves to maybe dislodge it uh, in an attempt to end the fight. And you can, you know, reward them for doing that or it can be a kind of bait and switch. Um, and, you know, you can sort of improvise that. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to have certain elements like that sort of figured out ahead of time um, so that you can uh, improvise within the bounds of what your players are going to find realistic or interesting, right? That's the idea, anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like this, although this has turned into more of a kind of like duck bill thing, which isn't necessarily wrong. Maybe it's more like, I think we want it to be more sort of curved. It's not wrong because dinosaurs are just, you know, proto-birds. And that gives me the idea that maybe feathers should be involved in this, but that might be a little too much, <laughs> too much going on. I like the idea of like little rocks and gemstones kind of like maybe encrusted in some of these areas. I'll have to go and uh, look up some bones that would make good knee pads. <laughs> like actual kneecaps of dinosaurs or something. I mean, this is like supposed to be like a giant statue, so. Maybe this one, she's just like barefoot, but she has like dinosaur feet. I wonder if that would be an interesting twist. So she's sort of a hybrid kind of uh, character. And then this, oh, let's get all Jurassic Park up in here is like some kind of amber sort of thing encased in in the shield. It's like uh, the, the, the amber is, is encrusted to the shield and, in, it's, and it has something cool encased inside, like a dinosaur or embryo or something. I don't know. I like that idea. Uh, you know, I don't know if I love that actually, but um, I like the idea of sort of like an amber Maybe there's multiple pieces of amber. Maybe like five, five pieces that are kind of like arrayed over this. Yeah. Get 
get rid of that X. We don't love that. And you know, I think actually if it's a mace, I like the idea of her sort of like holding it like aloft. We won't get too obsessive about the quality of the hands here. room for the uh, these freaking mace and maybe this is like some kind of puzzle to enter um, to enter a dungeon or something where um, you have to get it, it, so this is this is not a mace but a uh, like a basically I don't know what you call, like a drum, <laughs> what do you call a drumstick that's like, you know, for one of the giant drums? Uh, you know, it's basically that. This music is getting me in the mood for this. Okay, I take back what I said previously. Um, yeah, don't stop IDA. <laughs> you end up with better ideas. Uh, oops. Oopsie daisy. Oops, all good ideas. You know, I could, you know, on these other ones, I've sort of like been adding these straps and stuff to make it more realistic. Uh, or not even realistic, but just like, to make it mechanically make sense, um, you know, and you know, I, I am. I did mention, you know, in the previous kind of like approach to this designer, my initial ideas was, you know, if we're looking at sort of Greek and Roman statue and Renaissance kind of statues uh, as sort of a design inspiration, um, there is a bit more realism there. Right, there is a bit more representational. Uh, they are a bit more representational of, of uh, real forms, but still, you know, there are elements where it's like, well, it's made of stone. The thing is attached uh, by the nature of you know what it's made of. Um, you know, all of this is one piece of stone. Uh, it's not like she's wearing stone. Definitely a little more of an organic feel, but I like it. I 
Okay, I like a lot of what's going on here. Um, thus far. And previously on these streams, I've crapped out at about an hour. And we are approaching that now. I probably crapped out before an hour because uh, there's a few minutes at the beginning of each stream of like uh, the, uh, ooh. I mean, well, I, I, I placed like the video of the previous day uh, at the beginning, like a time lapse. And I do want to kind of up my endurance for this. Uh, it's not just endurance, but it's like how much do I actually want to do on stream? know what I'm doing with this just kind of like playing with some shapes here but yeah like how much do I actually want to do this knowing that there could be an audience or you know will be uh, and obviously since there's uh, nobody in here <laughs> um, generating the uh, talking points is you know oddly a little more taxing because you're just sort of talking into the ether, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what, what would people actually want to know about this process? Maybe they don't really want to know anything. Well, I mean, they want to know something, right? I assume if you clicked on this, but, you know, maybe you want to just draw along. Maybe you want to just, uh, yeah, chill and uh, look at some stuff being made. Like, I don't expect people to, like, learn much from this. Let's do the, uh, yeah, the tips. Tips covered in, like, decorative elements, so kind of like they do with elephant tusks, you know, sometimes. We will, uh, maybe... Just to indicate that this is a woman, <laughs> show a little uh, cleavage there, um, which you know is not uncommon in, in sort of like ancient statues, obviously. Uh, you know, of the Indian and uh, you know the Greek and Roman variety. I mean, like I feel like it's like you know certain Southeast Asian statues are more likely to show cleavage uh, or just have like bare breasts, I guess, but. Um, you know, in the Greek and Roma, like, everybody's just naked. Everybody's, you know, they're wearing, like, a cloth or something that's, like, partially covering, but... I guess, so I guess it really isn't cleavage so much as just, like, just, just boobs. It's just boobs. Um, be <laughs> bare, bre bare breasts, yeah, yeah, Sam, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, um... I was just talking about uh, ancient cultures and uh, statues with, with boobs. Um, a lot of that going around. We're not going to go quite that heavy on that for these, but, uh, you know. It's a place we could have gone and been historically justified in doing so. So that's a thing. So, um... Yeah, I ended up with kind of three iterations on this stone golem. The first one, pretty generic, pretty blasé. Uh, definitely like the second two a little better. So, the, you know, this one kind of taking a sort of like Buddha statue kind of inspiration. And then this last one uh, taking more of a like Dinotopia um, kind of fossilized stone sort of adornment kind of thing. Uh, and D&D uh, &D does have dinosaurs that they, they're a thing um, so I like I like this one a lot I like this last one maybe she's even got it I gave her dinosaur feet so I think it would be appropriate only appropriate to give her a tail that kind of wraps around the dias here this pedestal, or whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm just trying. I'm trying to appeal to that uh, 
to the scaly demographic, you know? Any scalies in the house? The reptilians, yeah. yeah. I thought about doing something with feathers on this too, just because you know dinosaurs. Uh, consensus nowadays is they're really more like birds than modern reptiles. But I don't know if that's true of like all kinds of dinosaurs or just the. You know, ones that look like giant chickens, like a T-Rex or whatever. T-Rex, a uh, Deinonychus, um, the little the little ones in uh, Jurassic Park Two that eat the little girl on the island or whatever. Definitely very bird-like. I don't know if they ever started putting feathers on any of the dinosaurs in. Uh, in Jurassic Park, in the new Jurassic Park movies, even after that sort of, even after that became the, the kind of scientific kind of consensus. I don't know how much of a consensus it is. I just, you know, from what I understand, dinosaurs probably often had feathers, feather-like thingies. Sam, I don't know if you're still there, but if you are, I'm just curious. What do you what do you got going on? You just got this on the background? Are you uh, are you sketching? Uh, what's up? What's up, my friend? down this bottom layer and just kind of like the idea of her on like kind of like a cracked bowl that sort of evokes that kind of like a fossilized egg sort of situation you know okay let's click save on this sucker because you never know when something's going to go horribly wrong. And I'm actually going to pull this one out, this last one, and try and get some... Just take a little further on the details. just focus on her design. We need a little more room for that mace, but we'll see how it goes. The opacity on this sucker here. And yeah, I guess I'll go in with the pen. Pen tool. I think I want it down even more. Oops, wrong layer there.
Mm, that's a little creepy. <laughs> I have to think about what I want to do with her eyes. I think I do want to make it clear that there is like a human face underneath this. So maybe we come back and solve that problem a little bit later. You know, I know there are, and I have played around with it in a clip, ways to mirror your drawing. And I just, uh, I don't know, I haven't found them very satisfying to work with. And the way that I found to do it in clip doesn't, um, you draw on one side and then when you erase on that side, it doesn't erase on the other side. It's really weird. I don't know if that's just a settings thing or if that's working like intended, but it doesn't feel correct. Like the whole purpose of like doing a, a kind of mirrored thing is so you're drawing the same thing and you'd assume that it would erase <laughs> the same thing because then you have to go and erase on both sides and then if it's not even, then when you go back to drawing, it's like there's little bits left over potentially okay maybe for a design workflow I mean it would make sense but you lose a little bit of that sort of organic feel to it when uh, you use tools like that and for something that you know may become an illustration it's not necessarily what you want something that's going to function on its own it's just a matter of preference because you could probably go and fix that up after you sort of gotten in the uh, rough layout or like I might even just copy this over so it's uh, <laughs> so it looks right well the thing is like this particular thing you know it's ambiguous as to whether or not it's man-made right because of you know what the sort of uh, nature of this thing is if it's fossilized that implies that this was once an organic structure. Or an organic structure that has been kind of decorated and fixed up into this construct. Yeah, this is getting a little crazy down here. I don't know what, what exactly to do about that. We definitely want kind of like a plating effect with some of this armor. You know, like you get on the rhinos and like the sort of primordial large beasts. The big old, the big old beasties, as they say. I, I don't know who exactly is they or, or if anybody actually says that to refer to uh, large mammals such as you know the, the hippopotami 
or hippopotamuses or whatever you want to call them. Okay, now we got a little kind of a dino mommy thing going on here. I don't know. That might, that might be awakening some things in me that I want to uh, stay sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we, maybe we, uh, <laughs> um, I'm so focused on whether or not I could, I didn't stop to think if I should. It's for all my, my Jurassic Park heads out there. For all my, my Jeff Goldblum fans. <laughs> I, I figured, uh, I figured that you, you had business to take care of, Sam. That is, that is A-OK. -okay. I did ask uh, what it was that you that you might be up to um, while you're uh, while you're in here, um, just just visiting, just uh, just kind of doing some doing some work with this in the background. Are you sketching? Are you just uh, what's uh, what's what's going on in uh, sunny uh, sunny California? Ooh, relevant to my stream. Lean into not doing art indefinitely. It's a weird thing to have to say out loud, but I think that especially for hobbies, it's important to let them rise and fall at will. Yes. Rather than imposing obligation onto them. This is different if there is an obligation. Of, uh, yeah, yeah. So making a living off it uh, or uh, working for a client or what have you. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's uh, obviously you don't even need me to tell you this, but there's there's not like any reason to beat yourself up for not drawing. Um, and, and I guess like there's almost never a reason, right? Unless you're yeah, you're literally shirking an obligation uh, like to another person that involves drawing. In, in which case, you not drawing would be. Uh, breaking an oath, so to speak. In which case, it's not really about the drawing, is it? Um, the drawing is, is just the mechanism by which you fulfill your, your sworn oath to another human, right? It's like the only time when it's like necessary. Um, but yeah, I've been thinking about that too in the context, not of art as a, uh, practice overall but with like individual projects that I'm working on like some of them some of them is like I need product to uh, to sell and I need things to show off my skills so I can get jobs um, yeah I agree yeah meditate on why it feels bad relevant to a lot of artists absolutely um, yeah, yeah, once you build up your identity around it, it's like, it's like I have this obligation that I've given myself. Hmm. What makes you think you have to? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a pressing, a pressing dilemma. Uh, when when it feels that way, right? Yeah, like with with this, I'm I'm trying to you know keep in mind that um, the kind of framework that I've set up for myself with this exercise is uh, just a catalyst for making drawings that are relevant to my interests and relevant to things I want to make and and do with my art. Um, but it is. It is not some kind of like be all end all unto itself, and it's not necessary that I commit to this every day, even if I, you know, sort of 
said to myself, I want to do that, or that's the structure of challenges. And it's like, what's the point of doing the challenge if you're not going to do it like whole hog, like every day? And it's like, well, what's the point of that? I don't know. Um, you know, if it's if it doesn't serve to make the art better or more enjoyable, then it's unnecessary. Like I've never done, I, I did Inktober once and I was like, you know what? Um, it's like, if I don't want to be making ink drawings, why am I pushing myself to, uh, to do this again? Um, or do it in the, in the same fashion that I did before. Um, where it's just like producing a drawing every day for the purpose of producing a drawing every day, as opposed to, uh, you know, because I enjoy it or because um, it needs to be done to fill the specifications of a project. Also, Sam, I don't know if you're still there, but uh, if you are, I'm curious if you can let me know how the music volume is for you because I haven't really had a chance to test it on stream. You is, you is still, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for responding. And thank you for being here, of course. I think it's a decent volume. I think it go, yeah, a few notches higher. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I think, uh, all right, I'm going to turn it all the way up on the OBS, but um, probably won't make too big a difference at the moment. I don't want to mess around with it too much. I'll test it out in recording later. This is um, Lo-Fi Diablo. <laughs> uh, Lo-Fi Diablo music um, from the official Diablo channel, which I assume is okay to have on stream because you know video you know typically video game music isn't uh you know enforced i do think it depends on the music it's a pretty chill soundtrack yeah yeah so uh, i think lo-fi as uh you know the, the favorite often of steven zapata uh makes sense as a drawing companion for something like this and uh anyway i don't think anybody's going to care or try and copyright strike this or anything because it's lo-fi and video game music but I guess you never know I guess being that you are a lawyer you might know Sam but uh Okay, I'm kind of losing the uh, plot here on some of this armor, I think. Kind of just kind of noodling around with whatever was on the under sketch. And I think at some point, probably off stream, I need to actually go in and do some, uh, some looking up of specific fossils and just stealing the shapes and the uh, feel of that uh, to use as the individual pieces of armor on this set. And I do think this one will require some finessing in the rendering and coloring and post-inking stage. Uh, to give it that stony look. Because right now it doesn't necessarily have that. It's just a line drawing.
Those eyes do have a little bit of a reptilian quality to them, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this beak thing either anymore. Maybe the mask needs to be a little simpler. Okay, so I do like this so far. I think I might need to adjust the proportions of this a little bit at some point, however. And probably make this tail, well, a bit more like it's like resting on something or uh, Kind of like it's part of the, we call that on statues, like the pediment, uh, sort of the supporting structure for this statue. Yeah, I might have to go through and rework that a little bit, but that's okay. Kind of like that. That general shape. And maybe I have the fabric hanging down here, but like another kind of plate. Or maybe this one is like a kind of scale. I mean, scale mail would make sense for this, even though we did talk so much about feathers and stuff. I don't hate it. But maybe, uh, yeah, the whole skirt is... set of three here. Alrighty, Sam. Have a good day. Be productive. Do good things. Say hi to the cats and the... the just the one dog, right? <laughs> At your mom's place. Anyway, say hi to the animals for me. I'll say hi to track for you. Probably get to the end of inking all of the main pieces of this and then we'll go ahead and call it for today for the stream portion anyway and then I'll do some research I gotta hammer away at some other drawings for other projects as well
Oh, there's my dog. I don't know if that's audible. I should definitely check on that. Now, I know that James Gurney does this in Dinotopia with uh, the Triceratops, giving them these little little uh, nubby things on the on the side. bring in the scale mail over here as well. I kind of like that idea. Or maybe the scale mail underneath as like a secondary pad under the kind of like bone. I always forget the, the pauldron. Yeah. Bone pauldron. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we might play around with that a little bit as well. I think maybe ultimately making her upper body a little bit bigger is still called for. I think that is the case, regardless of any other considerations. I think we'll give her, yeah, just human hands. Just regular old human hands. Nothing too crazy. Trying to figure out, you know, it's like, okay, so maybe we have some fabric here. We have those, that plating is kind of joined together here. So that means the junction up here is kind of obscured by this ball thing, but that's probably, probably okay. Yeah, I do like this one so far. Finding that this is this is a really fun exercise to get me to play around with designs that I otherwise probably never never would have. Um, so you know, I kind of ragged on. I didn't rag on it, but you know, I think the art challenge culture is. Um, Often participated in without, you know, a particular. Oh, there's Alexa. Without without a particular goal or purpose in mind um, by the individuals who, you know, just jump on the bandwagon with it, um, and that can be fine. Uh, you know, like you don't have to have. Uh, you know, you don't have to be super intentional about everything you do with art, especially if you're not interested in, in doing it professionally or you're, or, or, or the process is 
always going to be fun regardless and the challenge is just sort of a fun way to participate in a community thing i think all that's fine but i think there are a lot of people who are like i'm going to do this because it'll help me get better or it'll help me gain some notoriety within the context of this community event kind of thing uh and that kind of thinking i think on its own may not be terribly helpful um and that's because like you know for this kind of you know quote unquote challenge i've kind of designed it myself i thought about it i thought about doing something like this for a while um i'm i'm in control of this i'm not you know beholden to any kind of arbitrary standards uh and it feeds the goals um of some other projects that i have in the works uh which obviously makes it it gives it like a little more utility than if i was to say just do inktober for whatever reason or like right now uh, i think there's something going around it's like march of the robots or something you know for march and it's like well uh i'm not really uh i'm not really looking to do robot design um that's not really a thing that um interests me it's not really a thing you know you know not that i don't find it interesting but it's not it's not what i'm trying to focus on right now and so if i were to kind of break with my schedule just to uh just to draw some robots that doesn't doesn't really feel like it makes sense right like why would i why would i do that You know what I'm going to do with this? Let's actually give it more of like a, like a teardrop shape, like it's fused with this stone. Uh, as like, it's like amber or something that, again, repeating that kind of amber motif. I'm giving this stone golem a little more interest. Like, I don't know what, what amber is considered because it's like fossilized, so so would you consider it a stone or a mineral, or is it something, some other type of material? I'll have to look that one up. I'll have to look that up and see. Because you think of stone golems, especially as they're portrayed in the Monster Manual, as just kind of um, like gray almost concrete-like, or, or marble, perhaps. Like a marble golem would be kind of cool. So I like this kind of being soft, soft-edged. Having this other little ball at the bottom, which kind of echoes the shapes on the horns. this in here for that little piece. Mmm. Mmm, that's tasty. Okay, I'm digging this. I'm digging this so far, actually. Um, glad we went that extra mile uh, to come up with a design that wasn't so grounded in reality or grounded in history. Definitely feels more monstrous. Feels like it has a little bit more of a unique flair to it, something that you'd actually uh, want to see in a sort of monster manual setting or monster manual uh, type resource. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let me drop this brush size down a little and then 
go ahead and draw in these cracks here just to see, again, see how that would look if you had these cracks kind of all over the shield like this. Because I could go kind of crazy with it and have like, because like with fossilized eggs, oftentimes if you have the shell, it's like the dirt or like the material kind of in between the chunks of the shell obviously often turns to stone as well. And then you have sort of this like solid mass. So even though it appears broken, it has a little more solidity to it than might be implied by its kind of fragile appearance. Which is kind of cool, right? I don't know if I finished my thought earlier either about, um, uh, you know, when you have things to interact with on a character design for a setting like D&D, um, I was thinking that, you know, if this is like a drumstick or a... I'll have to look up what that would be. <laughs> a big ass, kind of like, uh, like the gong sort of like uh, style uh, drumstick. Um, like if you've got that going on, uh, you know, maybe the goal of the puzzle or the goal of the encounter is actually to, you know, maneuver such that you can get the, the uh, golem to like hit a, like a large symbol or uh, hit something so that it opens a door into the tomb. And so you're, you're actually not trying to fight it. Or maybe every time you defeat the golem, it reconstitutes itself on the pedestal and starts attacking you again. When you got, especially like an overpowered kind of party, to just throw something like that at them until they figure it out. Uh, and oftentimes, the, the problem is oftentimes they will figure it out. Uh, it's not really a problem, so to speak, but it's like, you know, maybe that isn't so much a solution to an overpowered party, it's just a fun way to uh, add some flavor and variety to your encounters. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm gonna save, satisfied at least with the stage that it's at and there are some ideation and other things that need to be taken care of. So um, we wanna look up uh, dino bone shapes to give some more interest to these armor pieces. Uh, we want to look up what the gong thing is called. I'm gonna write that down. Um, play with proportions a little bit. And then maybe look up some pedestal designs. And see where that takes us. That could be fun, I think. Alrighty, ladies and gents, uh, that's all for today. Obviously got a lot more work to do on this one uh, and on the previous one, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I have that one pulled up, but I've got some other, we showed off Bulbasaur today, a little bit of that Squirtle. Got like a Captain America and Spider-Man um, thing that I'm thinking about doing where they're, you know, set in like a D&D &D universe. Same with Daredevil here. I just was playing around with some airbrush shadows on this one a little bit. Looks like ass, probably not gonna, <laughs> probably not gonna use that layer. Um, yeah, I'll get some colors in there before I go back to it. And then of course, stone gold. So go ahead and save those notes and go ahead and hop off here. All right, happy drawing folks, take care.